Welcome to Rich TV Live. I'm here with the Market Maverick. How you doing today, buddy? Pretty good. How are you, Rich? Thanks for having me. Hey, my pleasure. Good to have you on the show. Excited to have you on the show. And today we're going to talk about the artificial intelligence bubble, the AI bubble that a lot of people think is going to burst. But before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about you. I want you to tell the community that's watching your story, give them your YouTube channel, tell them a little bit about how you got involved in investing, and let them know who the Market Maverick is. All right. Well, in 20, the end of 2017, 2018 is when I first met you there, and that's actually when I started thinking about opening up my YouTube channel, the Market Maverick. And um, thanks to you, actually, I got involved in this whole industry, and I've been really committed, really pursuing, this is my dream, my passion, to be financially set and stable. And I wanna give back to the community there by helping them make the best picks and the best investment strategies of May, March, of oh, sorry, of uh, May, June, July of 2023. And hopefully we can all come out as winners this year. There's a lot of things happening. The AI tech is rallying. And it reminds me of the dot-com bubble in 20, uh, 2001 there. So let's see, let's see what we can uh, give the info. Uh, we can give some info to the people here and see, uh, see what happens in 2023. Well, I think 2023 so far has been a fantastic year. Clearly, artificial intelligence has been leading the way. We've got a bunch of articles and different things that we're going to look at to give our opinions on artificial intelligence. But one of the first things I want to do is I want to show NVIDIA, okay? Because they've been pretty much the poster boy, the number one leading stock, large cap stock, as far as artificial intelligence. So I want to show you the chart of NVIDIA and kind of get your opinion on it. I see Amanda's in the chat. We got Blaze in the chat. Welcome, guys. If you have any questions, please put it in the chat as well. And I'm going to show you guys what I see here um, on uh, NVIDIA in the charts. So here we go. We're going to go to Weeble, where I like to do a lot of my chart analysis. And you can see here, you can see the chart here on, okay, one second. So we're on UPST. That's another one that is starting to really benefit from artificial intelligence. But the one that I want to look at is NVIDIA, NVDA. I think everybody should be really focused on NVIDIA. They've pretty much been the leader of artificial intelligence stocks. And you can see that in October 17th, 2022, let's say about six, six, seven months ago, they hit a bottom of $108 and they had a monster week. They went up, I think they had their biggest day ever this week after reporting earnings and having guidance saying that they actually beat their earnings estimates and that their guidance was going to be massive for next quarter and for the rest of this year due to an explosion in artificial intelligence and chips. And I mean, you can see this chart here. You can see how it's been extended. I mean, $108 to $389 in a period of six months. I mean, that's an absolute streamer. I think it's one that everyone should be focused on. It should, everyone should be looking at NVIDIA. And I believe that if you're looking at artificial intelligence stocks, you need to start with NVIDIA. What do you think about that? Uh, you know, they're saying that Kathy Wood's uh, ARC flagship dumped NVIDIA's shares just before it surged 160%. So, I mean, they're missing out. Bad move on the Kathy Wood there. Uh, I believe personally, it might keep climbing here as just like the dot-com bubble, they ran out of microchips in 2001 and we had uh, Micron technology skyrocket and NVIDIA is acting very similar to Micron technology. 20 years ago. Well, it's funny. I can show Micron, MU. So Micron symbol is MU, and they actually have had a similar chart. You can see they hit a low of, in September of 26th of last year, $48. They are now at $73. So all of these AI-related companies are now utilizing AI to fuel their stocks. And you can see this across the board. Literally, we can show you pick after pick after pick after pick that have been screaming due to this AI bubble. Now, my question to you is, do you think that AI is a bubble or do you think that AI is the future? I believe AI is the future. However, 
with what's happening right now with the debt ceiling, and it could be possible that companies are afraid of the, the U.S. dollar there might take a hit. So they could be putting their money mainly in the stock sector, in the sector here, uh, tech, to get away from a possible collapse, actually. If they don't raise that debt ceiling, we're going to see the, the veterans fund might take a hit first. Maybe stocks and bonds due to the interest rates and the real estate will come down. A lot of things can happen here. But uh, Warren Buffett, he says the CEOs are lying. At the same time, he's not afraid. He doesn't believe that the U.S. dollar will take a hit there. So a lot of things are happening right now. And what goes up must come down eventually. So I'm always wary. However, I do like to take that chance. And I do like to double up on my money there. So for me, NVIDIA... It's pretty high up there, but I'm liking Marvell. I'm liking Marvell. There's a lot of potential there as well. A lot of these tech companies are are really rallying. It's I it's just like the dot com bubble. I mean, we have a chart there about the dot com bubble and the similarities between the tech rally now. So I you talked about Marvel. Look like, at this so chart. I mean, this is absolutely insane. So they had a monster yeah. week as well. You could see it hit a low of thirty three dollars January. <laughs> And look at this move from 33 to 65.50. It's now it's $67 after hours. And look at that huge spike that we had last week. Look at this. Massive, massive spike last week. This huge move up, huge momentum, once again, due to artificial intelligence. People are looking for AI plays. You mentioned Marvel. They are considered an AI play, a pure AI play. And they've been absolutely exploding. So that's another pick that everyone should put on their radar and everyone should put on their watch list. And I believe that this momentum will most likely continue. I do believe this is a bubble. I do believe this bubble will burst like we've seen with all bubbles. We saw it in the EV stocks. We saw it in crypto stocks. I believe we will see it in artificial intelligence stocks. I just don't think we're going to see it yet. I think that it's going yeah. to go much higher first before we see the bubble burst. What do you think? You think this bubble is about to burst now? Or do you think it's going to run its course maybe last all year? It, I mean, most likely it should go until July. I mean, until at least the second half. We need to see the balance sheets of the Federal Reserve. That'll come in uh, the next month and a half here. We need to see what's going on in the private sector. I'm looking at NVIDIA and Marvel's charts here. Now, a long time ago, I learned every gap must be filled, and I'm seeing some very big gaps on NVIDIA from the price of $320, and the gap extends to $367. So there's a big after purchase there, and every gap needs to be filled on the market. So I always uh, I always get wary. I, wanna, I don't want to take too big of chances. So if I was to invest in any of these, I would probably go about half of my money. I wouldn't go full in. I would wait for a little bit of, a little bit of crash there. And then I would uh, I would get in after consolidating. Well, one of the things sure. that worries me is that the RSI is at 85. And typically when you're over 70 on the RSI, you're in the sell zone. So people are buying mm -hmm. NVIDIA right now and it's technically in the sell zone. So that's like a no go for me, but it doesn't matter because yeah. money is pouring into NVIDIA regardless because people want yeah. to ride the momentum and people would rather buy something too high then miss altogether. I've noticed this. It's been a trend in the markets. I don't know why it's like that. But people would rather buy at the top as opposed to missing something altogether. And I feel like NVIDIA right yeah. now is at a crazy bubble point. I'm not saying it can't go higher. It could probably go higher. I just don't think it would be something that I'd be interested in buying, knowing that it's up like hundreds of percent in the last six months. I'm not going to be the guy to buy it. So let's take a look at a couple articles here um, that you brought my attention to. So first and foremost, let's take a look at this here. All right, so we're gonna look at a couple articles here. Here we go. So you brought this chart to my attention here. Yeah. You brought this chart to my attention here. What, what is this chart? Why don't we explain this? So back in 1995, you could see the comparison between 2016 and 1995, the dot-com bubble and the current tech bubble. Now, the current tech bubble is obviously bigger due to the amounts of money they printed, about, I think, $20 trillion within the last three years. 
and we are seeing inflation through the roof now i believe it is definitely a bubble you can see the dot com bubble in the year 2000 it spiked uh 700 percent plus and then it went all the way back down to 150 percent so i'm gonna th i'm gonna agree that there is a lot of similarities here now you can see it chart by chart you can see it every year it's very similar so i believe you're 100 right rich there's definitely a bubble when is it going to collapse now if we're going off this chart if the bubble is going to pop i would say in the year 2023 2024 the end of 2023 and that's why that's why i said in the second half of uh this year we're gonna see a lot of different changes there's a lot of uh a lot of uh political turmoil in the currency sector i believe and we've got swift banning countries worldwide and this is going to have a great effect on the dollar which is also going to have a great effect on the bubble that we're currently experiencing here unrealistic high stock evaluations i mean the similarities if you were to scroll down a bit they get more in detail about the similarities here now the bubble formation developed during a bull run a bull market and low interest rate environment sorry i gotta plug this in here excuse me one second uh, all right, the bubble's burst conditions, the third one there, the Fed rate hikes aggravated the bubble burst. So we do have that right now, a lot of similarities. The Infotech during the burst, now Infotech fell 9% in January 2022. Um, in the year 2001, during the dot-com bubble, it fell about 60%. So we're only about 20% through until we start acting the similarities as a dot-com bubble so we do have a little bit of time i believe before anything is actually going to show on the balance sheets of the federal reserve and janet janet yellen actually she's been talking about june 5th would be the last day that they raise the debt ceiling so if it doesn't happen by then could be a last call there but do you believe that there will will ever really truly be a default on the debt ceiling when all they got to do is come up with a number, make an agreement, and then print more money. You know, this is the first time in history, Rich, where the United States can't print their own money to pay their own debts. Now, what happens if, I mean, it's very possible. They call this a dirty default. We've had money defaults in the U.S. dollar, but this is a dirty default where stocks, bonds, real estate, and then the currency could all take a hit back to back. And it happens pretty quickly. Now, since swift banned russia it left them with the reserves of the us dollar i don't like to talk political but sometimes you have to um and now if russia was to sell those us dollars that would force the central banks to have a reverse repo and pull in cash from commercial banks freezing our assets in order for them to pay back the fed that's a reverse repo which is another term for a dirty default and it's possible we could see this it's very possible. However, if it was to happen, they do have swift integration into the new ISO 20022. Now, at the beginning of ISO 20022, Bitcoin was not compatible. But as of now, Bitcoin is compatible with ISO 20022. And we're seeing these BRC20 coins pop up, similar to Ethereum's ERC20. And they all began in March. And just before Bitcoin has its upgrade, we're seeing a lot of new contracts that are being available new meme coins which can actually represent companies in the future to me it's just a name so a lot of things are happening at the same time the stock market's rallying while bitcoin's getting an upgrade and ethereum and the whole crypto space is actually moving forward with the stocks so i see some big changes happening this year the fact that swift is upgrading their financial system into a blockchain network we could see a full-on adoption by the Federal Reserve, which they said, single-day adoption by July. So Amanda's saying that in 2011, they came within three days of doing a default. So this has happened before. They seem to enjoy the, the show. You know what I mean? They enjoyed the show. Yeah. They like putting on a show. Oh, there's a default going to happen. Oh, is the default going to happen? We know there's not going to be a default, okay? Mm -hmm. There's, yeah. no, there's literally zero chance of a default. If a default happens, it will prove that the 
administration, the Biden administration, is completely incompetent. So yeah. why would the administration, going into an election year, allow themselves to look incompetent? This is not going to happen. There will be, there will not be a default. Okay, I'm you know calling it right now. I'm putting my name on it publicly. There will not be a default. Only in a position of incompetence would there be a default. And I don't believe that they would allow that to happen in an election year. It would be mass suicide. Why would they do that? It yeah. just doesn't make any sense to me. So you know, I don't see a default happening. I've never seen a default happening. And I believe that they are making it close to the deadline for posturing, for drama, for excitement for entertainment for volatility in the markets to keep people watching to keep people engaged yeah. to keep people looking otherwise what else are people going to be focused on uh you know you sound exactly like warren buffett today today you guys can search this up warren buffett slammed the last debt ceiling crisis as a stupid waste of time and called for the government's borrowing limit to be removed he said that about the 2011 standoff there now Warren Buffett says he doesn't expect the debt ceiling to uh, be the result of the U.S. government default. He says uh, he's he's warned that not raising the debt ceiling might be Congress's most idiotic move ever. And he's not worried because he doesn't believe the U.S. government will put their own currency under t turmoil as well. Yeah, so why I, would they do that? I mean, they're already I under enough turmoil. They're, they're already having enough problems. Uh, China is now no longer using U.S. dollars for transactions for like oil and other transactions. Same thing with Russia, same thing with Iran, same thing with many other countries yeah. that are looking to move away from the U.S. dollar. Why would they go and throw more fuel on the fire by defaulting on their own debt ceiling that they've created? You know, I do have an answer for this. I'm just not sure if everybody's ready for it. So... Based on my research, if the United States kicked Russia out of SWIFT, now we all know China's aiming for world reserve currency status, and their yuan is doing a lot better, and they're already on track for a, a digital yuan, which they're already using with Saudi Arabia as a Ramco. Now, if the United States, let's say, oh, I don't know what happened there. Oh, did you open that? Yeah, keep going. Go I'm just it. putting something else on the screen now. If the United States, let's say, uh, I call it two birds with one stone. The fact that they kicked Russia out of SWIFT leaves Russia with the only reserves of U.S. dollars. Now, as the, we get closer to the debt ceiling and China's expanding their currency all over the world, their digital yuan, they are ahead of the U.S. in blockchain. So they are creating their own alternative to SWIFT with the BRICS. Now, if this was to happen, China could very well see world reserve currency status unless something is done. Now, according to my research, I don't like to mention this, but 